Historian Nomalanga Makize delves into the stories that have shaped us as a nation. I'm the history expert presenter on Shoreline. My role is to present stories that have a sort of a modern history focus. I was born in uh, Durban in KZN, but I, I actually grew up in three different countries because my parents went into exile, so I spent some time in Swaziland and I also spent a bit of time in Zimbabwe. I am probably overeducated. I've seen the whole spectrum of schooling. I've been into private schools, I've been to coloured schools or so-called coloured schools. I've been to black rural schools where the toilet was just a hole in the ground, <laughs> you know. I arrived at Rhodes um, in, in, 19, uh, in 2000. I took a gap year. It was too white, the politics was too liberal. I just didn't identify with the space. But when I got into honours and into my masters and started working at Rhodes, then I met senior people. Then I started to find spaces where I could be okay with my political ideas and start to look at other people and think, okay, if I want to contribute to South Africa or my immediate community, I should look at the way these people do things, how they contest dominant spaces, and then um, work the way they work. This town has severe problems, severe, severe challenges. But yes, it's also well positioned because of the institutions that are here, roads, the High Court and the rest of it. And I have had the experience of being in multiple spaces in Grahamstown, but also being black in Grahamstown, black and educated in Grahamstown. I guess the greatest strength is to be able to understand both worlds. And to, and to see how she can blend them together. She's got the whole academia, you know, understanding of the system in terms of education. She's been um, lecturing at road, so she understands. Me, I'm just a guy on the streets who understand my community. When I met X, he began really teaching me about Grahamstown and showing me what Grahamstown was about. And we, we put ideas together as to what we could do. And then as time went on, we realized that what we needed to do was start focusing a lot on education because that's the one thing that we felt would really change things for young black people. So we have started an organization called Save Our Schools and Community in about 2008. And we've been working on building that since then. Over the past three years, what we've been doing is we've just been working with very local in our community where we think we can make a, the biggest difference so like working in our library for example starting the reading and homework program in the Fingo library X used to go there every day last year and ensure that kids were doing homework and reading with road students and then that took on its own momentum so now it doesn't need us you know, she loves kids, she loves reading, and I want my community to change. I want it to be a reading community. Then we started um, a program with Rhodes and the workers there to try and intervene where their children are concerned. And, and Rhodes took up this program where they basically assist their workers' children to get extra tuition because of the, the gaps that the school system leaves has been relatively slight. Only within the moment of time represented by the present century has one species, man, acquired significant power to alter the nature of his world. Just underline that line there. I have looked at this curriculum. Let me tell you, this is a highly sophisticated, complex curriculum, and our teachers are not trained. I was able to do justice to the history exam when I was teaching the kids because I have a, I'm getting a PhD and because I have a master's in history so I have a good view of the entire subject so when I look at the exam question I can help the kids to unpack it now if you can't train your teachers to do that then you're in trouble to me it's not activism it's I need my children to grow up in a healthy space and they need to grow up in a healthy space because they deserve it